Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Joni Young here if you're new. Thanks so much for joining me today for this painting tutorial. This is a full length real time tutorial, step by step. I'm gonna show you guys everything you need to know and you can paint along with me today. So make sure you hit subscribe and like this video. Today I'm working on an 11 by 14 stretched and primed canvas. I pre-painted mine black. I let it dry. You can use a white canvas too, that's just fine. I personally like uh, working on a black canvas. I like the contrast that I get instantly and it just helps those colors pop. So I'm going to go over the colors I'm using today. I've got turquoise blue, titanium white, light olive green, Mars black, light blue violet, neon rose, yellow cool, yellow warm, and orange. Keep in mind you can use regular colors as well. You don't have to use neon paints for this. If you're not sure about alternatives for these colors, just leave a question below in the comments below this video. I'm also going to have a full list of the colors I'm using today with links for these luminous neon paints if you're interested in those in the description box below this video. So I'm going to go ahead and get started working on the water. I'm going to build up from the background to the foreground. So the water is going to be the first stage of this painting. I'm going to be using a large brush. This is a number 50 filbert, but you can use any large brush. It doesn't have to be one like this. And I'm going to get my brush wet first. And I'm going to choose, uh, I think, my blue turquoise first. And I'm going to start right at the top of the canvas here. A little bit more water on my brush. And I know that we've got some movement in the water from these swans, so there's going to be these little rings like this. So I'm going to think about that as I'm applying my brush strokes and my colors. So what I'm going to do now is take some of my blue violet. I haven't washed my brush off. I'm going to go right from the top and I'm just going to start pulling that in to my turquoise blue, letting that kind of mix and blend around. Take a little bit of water. Gently pull and sweep and go around in that circular shape for those rings in the water. Gently just scumble out the rest of the paint. The next color I'm going to add is my luminous rose. I'm going to take the rest of that blue violet. It makes a really pretty color together. And I'll just start lightly coming over and incorporating this color in with the other ones. You can also gently pull down like this to create more of a reflect reflection in the water. Just creating a few little brush strokes like this can really change the atmosphere and make the water feel really tranquil. I'm going to pick up a little bit of white and start making some lighter tones now. Now I know that we're going to come over this area with the swans, so I'm not overly concerned with how this area looks too much. I just want to add colors at this point and a few little rings in the water. I'm 
again, just for a little bit of that ripple effect from the gentle movement of the swans. You can even add a little wiggle, wiggle, wiggle and pull. Turn your brush this way and do the same thing if you want. You can use a lot of different brushes for this technique. This is nice for creating little reflections from branches above or flowers. And then I very lightly pull and sweep again that way. We can go over these rings a little bit. I'm gonna take a little bit of water on my brush and just loosen some of this paint up. That helps quite a bit. Wiggle, wiggle. And then you can layer over as much as you want. To get that shape back with a brush, I always like to just kind of wiggle, push, and make it nice and flat like this, especially if there's something thinner that I need, like a skinnier line. Okay, for our next colors, I'm gonna be adding some yellow and making some turquoise. So more of a aqua green turquoise. So what I'm gonna do is switch to a number 14 filbert brush now. So I'm gonna go down a few sizes and I'm gonna start coming in with, like I mentioned, I'm gonna make this aqua green turquoise. Now this is a very pretty color, but we've already got quite a bit of that. So we can change it instantly by adding some lemon yellow. Now, depending on what, you, what yellow you're using and what blue turquoise you're using and white, your shade will your shade of paint you're making will vary so it really depends like if you're not happy and you can't get this color it may be because you're using a uh, different brand of paint or a uh, different yellow or different blue or white okay so i really like this color it's kind of like a more of a minty tone at this point i could really play up more on the yellow and maybe i'll do that in just a little bit but i'm going to start adding this and i'm going to use a little bit of water so I can cover the parts of the canvas a little bit better. That'll help fill in those little holes and uh, little areas of the canvas that show through. Sometimes it's nice to have that, but I kind of want more of a blended look for this. So you can see how all the colors just look so pretty together. And we're going to just add more and more. We'll see how the less blue I use, more yellow and white. I can lighten that. So just think about gentle pressure, letting off and twisting where you want to have these skinnier lines and then more pressure where you want it to be thicker. So you can really control a larger brush for thinner lines. You don't necessarily have to go down to a smaller brush if you just know how to handle the amount of pressure you use, when to let off. With acrylic paint, and especially um, painting those of you that are painting along with me on a black canvas. It's going to dry um, quite a bit darker than this. So if you want yours to be really, really on the pale side and these really light colors, as you see them going on uh, here, then make sure you're a bit more generous with the amount of paint you're using and the white. White is what uh, you need to really help prevent your paint from drying too dark. I'm just gonna add a few little wiggles in here. So you remember we did this with a larger brush, so you can also do it with a smaller brush and then just gently pull down and flick. And this is just for a little hanging, maybe there's like a weeping willow or something above or off to the side. And we're just seeing the 
reflection, some of those branches, flowers and vines here in the water. And then a little pull and sweep sway. You can even, so turning your brush like this with the handle pointing up to the ceiling, you can slide, wiggle, wiggle, and that'll give you kind of a ripply effect too. And take a little bit more white water on my brush and get my brush loaded up here on the bottom so I can demonstrate that just a little bit better. There we go. And then let off where you want to have smaller ones. Or you can turn your brush, so have it like this for these little ones, and then turn midway. And then we can also just, there's all sorts of ways to create these reflections and patterns in the water. Okay, I'm gonna go over to my light olive green. I'm gonna mix that in here. This makes more of like a green gold color. It's very pretty. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of this in here. I'm going to take some more of my rose, turquoise, mix those colors up. And I'm going to add a little bit in between here. Just ties all the colors together. Don't be afraid to layer over and be a little loose and you know, it feels like out of control, like you're going to ruin something when you approach your painting style this way, but this is one of those paintings that's just a little bit looser, with the background especially, so you can be carefree and layer your colors and really enjoy yourself throughout the painting process. Just little taps and then gently going over it. And then a few more rings. It's like a real gorgeous lilac color. The lilac uh, here is in bloom right now, full bloom, and it smells so pretty. You see these mint greens, turquoises, and this violet color. All these colors are so complimentary pretty together. They work really, really well. But I personally like these colors. You guys might not. That's why I like to mention in the beginning and sometimes during, I like to remind you guys to use whatever colors that speak to you and make you happy. Now I'm going to take a little bit more of my white. I'm going to take some of my warm yellow, you see a big difference there, right? It looks more orange. So I'm going to blend it together and then get a nice amount on the tip of my brush. And I'm going to start making some brighter highlights here on the ripples of the water, the rings. And this is another color that works really well. Just make sure you add enough white to it. Otherwise, it's not going to dry uh, the color that you want it to be.
Okay, so I'm gonna start coming in with my first swan. And the first swan is back here. I'm doing this one first because we're building the painting up background to foreground. So you have to do everything that's behind first and then your foreground, the bird, is going to be in front of that one. So that's what we're going to do, is just come in first with a little bit of white, a little bit of black. Mix it up here. Maybe there's a little bit of violet in there or light blue, violet, either one is fine. We just need a bit of a darker base first. Okay, and then I'm gonna start with the head right here. The beak will come out here. So curve up a little thicker right here. Skinny beak that kind of just comes out to a little point. Right here. And then we're not gonna see this area too much in here because this is where they overlap. The next swan and the head comes in here. So I'm just gonna kinda go down like this. I'm gonna go across and then up. So straight across, round it, and then come up. I'm just gonna fill that in. I'm going to come in with a little bit of black now and I'm going to go right below. I'm going to kind of scoop a little bit here for the shape of the bird. There's some little dips in here where its wing comes out here. A little bit more black and I'm going to I'm going to change the color of the black by just adding some blue turquoise so it's a little bit richer in color. I'm just going to add a little, little peak right in there and then add a few little ripples like this and then push a little bit harder to make the shadow down here a little thicker so right underneath where it meets the water and then we're going to start pulling out like this a few little lines and if it looks a bit weird don't get frustrated and freak out and check your painting out it's supposed to look wrong there's an ugly stage and it looks wrong at first midway process like just trust me guys keep going don't judge your painting too soon. It's got a little bit of a shadow right there. And just that for now, and then I'm gonna go over that. I'm gonna take off a little bit of that beak because it's just a, a little bit too long. Okay. All right, so the next color I'm gonna use is a little bit of white. And I'll come in with the head. And then I'm going to add more of a highlight off to the left side down here and then in the front. But like I said, this is going to be covered up slightly, right, from the other swan. And go down here. Let's just grab a little bit more white. We'll pick up a little bit more. We're going to scoop down here. Big scoop right here. If you happen to pick up any of that black, I just did, so I wiped it off on my towel. Then I come down here and add a little peak or make it look like a little V right there.
So we want that all to be bright white and then we're going to come in with the next layers right in here. This is going to be in shadow here. It'll make sense in just a minute. So we're going to come kind of from the top here and gently on an angle create these little sweeps. This helps to make the swan look graceful and then we'll come down a little bit lower and meet up with that one. We'll start another layer and the filbert brush works great but if you don't have a filbert brush we'll add some little smaller ones in here. If you don't have a filbert brush you can use a round brush as well or even a flat brush. Like I said I mentioned before if you're really stuck for what brush to use, what colors to use, if you don't have what I'm using, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. Okay, I'm gonna come down right here. See how it's gradually getting a little bit darker and weeding up. I've got less paint on my brush now on the end. And then it meets right here for that shadow. And again, right here, we're gonna be coming in with the next bird. I'm going to come in with another layer of white where I want it to be really bright and a little bit more solid here. So the bottom part here is brighter. And when this dries, I can come in and add more highlights to the tops of the feathers. I'm going to rinse this brush out now and I'm going to switch to a smaller one. That way I can have some more um, control over the smaller details that I need to add. So I'm going to actually use a zero size zero uh, liner brush. It looks like a round brush right now, but when I get it wet, it's a liner brush. So like I said, if you don't have these brushes, just use whatever you have. The smallest one and follow along. I'm going to come right underneath here with a little bit of that black turquoise and some water. Create a little scoop right in here. A scoop. I'm going to take more black this time. Stretch that out a little bit more. I'm going to add a little bit of my orange and my warm yellow. And I'm going to go over the beak. It's going to dry darker than this, but I want it I don't want it to be black. I want to have a hint of that orange there. Take just a little bit more and there's just a little bit of white in here. I'm going to add a little, a little dab there. Okay, then I'm going to take more white and I'm going to add highlights here. So scooping in here on the top and then just dragging down the neck, that side of the neck, leaving this side darker and I'm going to add some white to my black and turquoise and make like a dark charcoal color here. I'm going to come up here, add some shadow, a little bit of shadow on the top here, the head, and down, right down here. Okay. 
And I've got a little bit of wet white paint here. I'm just gonna pick up and kind of just fill this in a little bit because the scoop I made was a little bit too exaggerated. I'm just going to add these little, little dabs, tapping. Gently go over that. I'm going to take a little bit more black again. Go over to this. Just to make it show up a little bit more. Then with my rings, I've got the dark shadow. Now I need to come in with um, my lighter rings. So I'm going to take a bit of that. I'll take both yellows, some white. Such a pretty, perfect shade of yellow. And I'll just add a little, little, little highlights in here in these rings. here and soften that just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to take some more white and I'm going to start creating these little, see these little scoops? These are for the next layer of feathers. So we have these ones that come in diagonally. And then we have these little ones that are also on an angle diagonally, but they're smaller and scoopier. Come down on the edge here. I'm going to just tint this white a little bit with my yellows. I think this it's always a, a nice idea, especially when you're, you're working on a, a sunny picture. If you want to really feel that sun, tint your into your whites with some orange, red, or yellow, or even a little bit of pink. And remember, it's going to dry darker, so add some more white. I'm going to add a little bit of orange here to cut all that that yellow this is this neon orange is kind of like it's really really warm so it's gonna prevent it from looking too like a greeny yellow when it dries Now I'm going to take some of my light olive green and some of my blue turquoise and we're going to make this uh, more of like a Kelly green color. I'm going to go over the black. 
And look at how much it changes it. It doesn't look so flat anymore. Making a dark, dark, rich green watercolor. I'm going to go over to a number four filbert brush. Take a little bit more black, olive green, blue turquoise. And I'm going to pull out a little bit right here and have this come out. So another little ripple, shadow, reflection in the water. Bring it down, dip down a little bit like this. And I'm going to take some more of my white, the yellows, and that orange. Layer over and warm this area up a little bit. And the paint is still pretty wet, so it might be something I have to come back and go over again. I'm going to take those same colors and add that in my reflections here again. It's okay if you pick up a little bit of that green. Don't worry about it. Even prettier. I kind of like that color. I'm going to make it and add a little bit in here. So this is where the rings start to change direction. They start coming in here now and turning. So it's really like those cool patterns. No. The pattern starts to change, but make sure you have a reflection on this one in the rings this way, and then have it gradually come in here. Okay, so I'm going to just come in lightly now, very lightly over those highlighted areas. You can give a little wiggle too. Create gentle movement in the water. Okay, and I'm going to start coming in with my next swan. So I'm going to be using, I'm going to continue to use this number four filbert brush. And I'm going to start with white this time. And the head starts right here. I'm going to just gently push, create like a little oval, and then come around, straight down using the point of my brush, the end, and I'm going to pick up a little bit of my gray just right away here so you guys can understand what I'm doing here. So right in between and down this side is our shadow side so it's a little bit thicker here so I'm going to apply more pressure and then let off gently gently and then a little line like this and then this side of the head more white go over that and kind of just scoop out here, scoop down here, so scoop out, scoop under, and then right in here, I think we're going to start, the beak will come out here, we're going to have 
quite a big bird down here that's under. I'm going to scoop down. And I brought that down too low, so I'm just going to take that off. down a little bit lower. Bring it around and then up here. So it's the angle that this one is on. And then go up. We're just working on the basic shape. So don't worry too much about every feather at this point, right? This is just the shape walking in. And I'm going to take more white my yellow orange mixture add that right there come down get as close as you can to the neck right in here Fill that in. Now right in here, we're going to leave space. This is the one wing on one side and this is the other one on this side. So there's this little, they're just touching here, but there's going to be a little space right there where we can see the water through. And then I'm scumbling around here because it gets into their shadow area. So we can kind of just lightly go over, wiggle, wiggle. This is either a, like a, you can do a scumble or a dry brush. I'm gonna add some more turquoise, black, making a darker gray and right in here I'm going to come out make that come out a little bit wipe off any excess um, white if you happen to pick it up kind of just dab in here dab 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 these little dabs can give the illusion of um, little feathers and then over with my lighter color see how they'll start to meet one another and kind of blend in so you get more of a gradual gradation now we need to come in with a face I'm going to stop what I'm doing here switch over to my smaller brush my liner brush again a zero and I'm going to take black Okay, and I'm going to go scoop like this. Scoop and then make it thicker. And then gently pull down down and then a little dab on the end there washing my brush off taking my orange and my warm yellow I'm gonna dab 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 inside a little bit of that black and then pull in my beak Now to make it a little bit lighter, because this one is going to show up a little bit more, let me just load my brush up properly. Twist to get it to a nice point again. Pick up 
white mixed in with the orange and the yellow. I'm just going to add a little bit more to that beak back there. Okay, so I've got the right color in here. I just want to make it a little bit wider. So I'm going to take, I've got a lot of paint there. I'm going to take it from the sides here and pull it out either way and then go into my black and go across the top. Add a little black dot right there and a little dab on the end. And you can just outline as well. Now I'm going to take white, whoops, not turquoise. <laughs> take my white, go inside that scoop, fill it in go up and over so that it's not looking so see-through. I'm going to use a little bit more of my titanium white here. Tap, tap, tap. Little dabs, little scoops. And then there's a little bit of light in here, so I'll gently blend in to this area here. I'll take a little bit more. Work it up here. Back over to my number four, Filbert. I'm just going to soften this a little bit. I am going to be using a little bit more of my light blue violet. I've run out of it, as you can see here on my palette, so I'll be adding a little bit more. I need to fill in this water area here, so I'm going to use my light olive green, blue turquoise, just a darker color that's going to show up. So I'm just going to create a little triangle here, somewhere between the wings, right about there is fine, and then a little line, a little dot, dot dab, a little triangle, and then across make it just a little bit darker so we can add a little bit of black there and just go inside just so it kind of breaks up makes it not so solid then we'll take our black light olive green and blue turquoise again and we're going to come right underneath and we're going to start adding some reflections so just little gentle scoops like this one under another mix up some more color trying to get the right shade here I'm gonna go in around kind of wiggle underneath it comes out a little bit wider here and then can come back up in here. So now it's kind of on an angle. Okay, so that's how it goes. And then a little dry brush. just a little bit more of my black and just in some areas here okay, just a little something like that I think I'm just going to kind of ease off here on 
my um, reflection. I won't take that down too, too far. But now I need to lighten this because this isn't all in shadow. So now we can come in and go back and add some more um, rings in the water and highlights. We'll bring back that light where it needs to be. So I'm going to just take, I think I'm going to warm this up a little bit with some of my neon orange. And I'll come in here, gently go. So this is where it's really important. You want to get this beautiful blending just very, very lightly into that wet um, blue, black and yellow that we added or light olive green, I should say. And then wherever we have those ripples there, we can come in. Get really close to this white and bring that around. Gonna rinse out my brush a little bit and I'm gonna add a little bit more turquoise. So I'm gonna make a brighter one here. Neon lemon yellow, blue turquoise, and white. And I'm going to start adding some of this in here. Just sort of go over any of these little rings and highlighted areas. I'm going to mix in a little bit with that peachy color. Put a little something in here just to break up all that solid. So that green that we made, just adding a little bit of peach, yellow, or both yellows. And I'm just going to come in here. Gently lighten that. Then I'll go back into my light peach. So I'm going to add a little bit of this blue violet, still using my number four uh, filbert brush. And I'm going to come in on the side here. I like this color for shadows along with my um, gray. And that little line. I'm just going to go over 
what I've got already here. So we know where we have our shadows already, right? Because we have them here in gray. This really changes it quite instantly and dramatically. Such a gorgeous color. I'm going to add a few little scoops in here. Little scoops. And in here. And then we're going to start pulling and flicking up this way on an angle where you can go in both directions. And just inside here, a little on the end. I'm going to add a little bit here as well. I'm just going to go right over this. Gently feather my brush in to the feathers. And then right down here, where it kind of scoops in, is where we have a little bit more shadow. With a little bit on the tip of my brush, I'm going to catch the edge. Instantly make this stand out. forget about this guy back here. And that shadow right here. Rinsing my brush out. I'm going to take some more of my light yellow, some warm, and some white. A little bit more white. Make sure it doesn't dry looking sort of green. And just a few little dabs in here. More white. I've got quite a bit here on my brush. Very little pressure, gentle little sweeps. Now we can come in here and add our bright sunlight. which comes right in between his neck and the beak. And then we'll give a little flick and curl up like this. Just very slightly like that. Come down, scoop. We're going to go across that line that we added.
come over there. And then we are going to have some flowers that are hanging down here, so I'm not going to worry too, too much about this area. I'll gently scumble over these shadows just so that we get a gradation. come in with a little bit of blue on the tip of my brush and add this line here come in and then inside that wing okay so I'll show you that again over back and inside the wing now we can come in and kind of just cut in some of these feathers this will make them stand out a little bit more and then just use that blue or whatever dark color you want to use. I'm just going to go over that green a little bit. A touch of that green grayish color in with my blue just to make a little bit more of a darker shade here. There we go. It was too flat looking. We need to add a few little mid-tones here and some little taps and dabs for some feathers. Make that come out a little bit more right here. Exaggerate that a bit more. Okay, so I'm going to add another color to my palette. I've got pink, neon pink. And I'm gonna add some flowers coming down here and some more uh, color in the water. I'm just gonna add a little bit of this pink. I'm gonna take a bit of my orange. Isn't that a pretty color? I know that red and green go beautifully together, so pink and turquoise will. of pink and blue violet are also nice. And we can add a few subtleties in here of this color as well. Just don't be afraid of color, guys. Really? experiment and have fun. Okay, 
make a little bit more of my orange and some white. bit more to those greens. Okay, so now I'm going to come in and add some flowers. What I want to do is make a, a sweeping branch that comes down and I'm going to make that brown color with some black and my orange. So I don't, I'm not going to use my, I'm not going to need my orange anymore so I can just use all of it. It's getting quite thick and now I'm using heavy bodied acrylics. You can use, um, anything you want even oils now just note that oils take a lot longer to dry so you may not be able to add highlights the same way that i'm adding mine and i'm just going to lift up my bar here so that i can get to the top and i'm going to come down i'm going to add a branch that a few branches that sort of scoop down like this I want these branches to be just as graceful looking as these beautiful swans. Okay, right over here, like I mentioned, we were going to have some branches hanging down and I'm going to just slide into my black and my light olive green and I'm going to start pushing, twisting and letting off for some leaves. Push, twist and let off. I'm going to use a little bit more of my green because the black is. So once you get that push, let off technique. You can go a little bit quicker, pick the speed up, and use a little bit of that brown color that we made. So don't be afraid to come over top. And layer over. This really kind of sets the swan back there and you feel the overhang. You feel like they're underneath this tree branch. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of white now, mix that in. Same thing, push, twist, let off, dab, dab. You can do it quicker, layer over and add some highlights. You're always leaving a little bit of the existing dark color there though. We need both and you can have some brighter ones too where the light and the sun is going to be hitting them more, right? Now I'd like to add some little cascading vines and maybe there's a weeping willow in here too or just some vines hanging. So I always like to add a little bit of that. 
and take a little bit more of my black. Just slide in, got a little line of it on the end of my brush. And we'll add this to our branch, not completely covering up what's there, just enhancing it with a shadow and maybe a few more branches. Okay, with a clean brush, I'm going to take some pink and some white. And I'll just add some little pink blossoms here. Simple, simple little taps. Now I'm deliberately going over and letting the um, wet paint, the dark paint underneath pick up because adding that, having that in with these petals is going to give me the first layer I need for some shadows. I mix up some more paint. So don't spend too much time painting every single petal and flower perfectly. It's about placement, color, and how you will see it as a whole when the painting is all done. A little bit more white. And I'll start adding a little bit more here. So work as some highlights, lighter shades to my flowers. I kind of like to have it sort of marbled looking so I get um, more of a natural look. I'm getting a highlight and a shadow all at once. So I don't like to over blend too, too much. You can't go wrong with just approaching your flowers with dabs like this. Dab, dab, dab. Little dabs inside of bigger dabs and you'll get more of a layered look. And then I'll add little bits here in the water. The reflections. And then in with the ripples. I have some that just sort of come down. I'm even letting it kind of drip. I've got some water here on my brush. Have it look a little bit blurry and impressionistic. Coming down on this side. I'm just going to take a little bit of my blue violet. And just come in here and sweep. Sweep and scoop. For no other reason than I just feel the need to add this color in here and I like the way it looks. Add a little bit of a branch or a few more little branches that 
kind of hang down here. Go back to my pink and my white. Dab, dab, dab. Another nice flower you could, flowering tree you could paint is a magnolia tree. That would be really pretty. Or a lilac. And I've got a magnolia painting tutorial and I've also got uh, one or two lilac painting tutorials. So just have a look through, scroll through my videos and my playlists and you'll find lots of ideas for different flowers. Irises, hydrangeas, water lilies. I'm a huge flower lover. Just picking up a little bit more pink. And again, I'm using neon pink, but you can use any pink. It doesn't have to be neon. more white. I'm just gonna add a few smaller ones that go right down to the bottom. I think it kind of has, gives this a nice finish to the painting, kind of frames it in and then swirls around and takes us over here to the swans. What I like to do Towards the end of my paintings is just take a little bit of the last color I used, the pink, just gently dust over or brush over where the shadows meet the highlights. This sort of ties everything together and finishes it off nicely. I'm going to take straight white and I'm going to go right in here and add my final highlights. Okay, well, I'm going to call this painting all done. This was so much fun. I'm glad I got to show you guys how to paint this one. Thanks for joining me today. Have a wonderful day. Please subscribe to my channel and leave a comment below if you enjoyed this or if you have any questions. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you all soon. Bye.